So hello everyone. Have you ever wondered how do robots navigate? Then you are at the right place now to discuss on the basics of um, robotic mapping. And today we will dive into an algorithm which deals more about uh, the process of robotic mapping and SLAM, which is sequential localization and mapping. And I'm Sprints, a hobby roboticist. Imagine yourself visiting a new city. Let's take for an example Linz here. And you would like to explore the city without the use of any um, navigation tools or maps in this case. So the first thing that you do is you get down at the central station of, uh, that is the Linz Habbanov and then you come out of the station and this is something similar that you would look at. And the moment you look at a screen, a picture like this or a view like this, uh, the one and two that, that is mentioned here on the pictures could be could be one of the landmarks that your brain chooses because these are like a tall building and the other one is a commonly seen uh, thing that is a bus stop. So here it's Wizens room and bus stop that uh, my brain chose as a landmark for instance and I move further away for few meters and this could be the second observation. This is again the same bus stop that is three and fourth is a tall building which is, which could, which is an apartment. So what my brain basically does is it tries to fuse these images together to create the map of the city in this case. And here, how can it be done? So it could be something similar to this. Here you could see that the, the bus stop in the image first and second is clubbed together into one. That will be creating the map of this city in from two images. When it, the process continues or iterates over a period of time, walking throughout the city, you could get the map of the whole city. This is something that our brain processes and creates the map of. So now I know that when I come out of the train station, there is a bus stop opposite to the train station. And I'm a person with poor memory. So imagine that I take 10 days to explore the city. After this, I go back to my hometown and I come back again after some days to reach a destination, which is Ars Electronica in this case. Unfortunately, my phone battery is out, so I can't use the navigation tools now, nor I don't prefer using the old school maps. So in this case, I already explored the city, so I have a map of the city in my, in my brain. So I'm trying to use this now. So when I start navigating, uh, the first thing my brain does is it's, it likes to localize myself. In this case, the first image that we saw is the barn off. So I want to localize myself, like how, how many, uh, what is the distance between myself my location and the barn off in this case. And then once I come out of the train station, I would like to localize how many, what is the difference between my location and the bus station in this case. And with that proximity, I can localize myself in the map that my brain created previously in my previous trips. And now I can actually uh, find um, the location of Ars Electronica, which is also predicted by my, my, my map. And then it, with, in this manner, I can actually create a path with the help of, with the use of my brain. And to actually um, confirm it, there are a lot of landmarks or futures that come across my route. So let's say if I start my um, uh, journey to Ars Electronica in this case, my brain tries to compare the landmarks like, uh, like bus stops, like other buildings, and it compares it with the actual uh, map that things that I'm actually looking. And my eyes here are acting as a sensor so that it confirms my predicted value and my observed value and this is how I could reach my destination. This is one approach which I would use to reach a location in real, in real time. But how about robots? Do you even wonder why I'm talking about city exploration in this case? Well, the reason is to know if the robots can do the same. Unfortunately, yes, it's possible for the robots to do that. We have eyes which act as a sensor to observe and perceive the environment. In this case, there is a LiDAR sensor and RGBD camera that is commonly used for robots to solve such uh, problems. Each of these sensors has their own advantages and disadvantages. Recently, there is a lot of development that is going on in the RGBD camera because cameras are cheap comparing to the other sensoric devices. And today, let's discuss about an introduction or an overview about one such approach to solve this SLAM problem. SLAM is nothing but sequential localization and mapping. So you're trying to localize at the same point and trying to map the environment, just like how I try to map the uh, city, that's uh, Linz. In, in such approach, uh, RTAP stands for real-time uh, appearance-based sequential planning, localization and mapping here. So here in this case, we are it's the next level of SLAM where we are planning the location, localization and also the mapping uh, at the same time. And here, as you can see with this algorithm, the inputs are the RGBD camera, which is a depth camera, 
and um, TFs and odometry data that come from the uh, con drives or the controllers of the drives. And these data are uh, synchronized together with the timestamps and then they are uh, sent to the short term memory. This is the working memory that the robot uses. It's like a RAM in the, in the PC and then it sends it to the loop closure. Loop closure is nothing but the same thing that uh, we did earlier with the pictures of the, uh, uh, when I uh, was explaining about an example with city exploration. So there are two images that has common features. So now the overlapped features are actually uh, taken together and fused so that we get a map of the uh, environment. And this is how a um, global map is fo uh, formed. And here the, our point of interest are two dimensional occupancy grid map and octo map, which is the three dimensional map. And I'm more focused on three dimensional map here for our demo today. And uh, yeah, this is uh, what we expect at the end. So let's try it out. Here on the left, we could see that there is a demo en environment. Here, unfortunately, we can't uh, map the whole city since uh, we have a limited time restrictions. And um, on the right, you can see the robot's view of the map. And this red line that you can see are actually the laser scan data. Uh, but for this demo purposes, we are not using the laser scan. We are just using uh, RGBD camera. And here, you could see a video. Uh, of the robot being mapping the whole environment. And this is a simple demo of the RTAP SLAM mapping process. On the left is the environment, as I told earlier, that we are actually interested to map. And on the right, you could see the map that is being created by the robot. As the robot moves, uh, the map is actually updated on the right side. On the center bottom, we could see depth images and RGB images. And these, this is the view that the vehicle could look at. So basically, we are looking from the vehicle's eye. And here, uh, as I told earlier, the, there is laser scanner that is involved, but we are not using it. The robot that is used here is a turtle bot with a laser scanner and RGBD camera. But uh, for the demo purposes, since we are using RGBD camera, anything that, that uh, involves laser is a noise. As you can see in the camera data that there is a red line that is crossing. And this is actually a laser scan. And this is considered to be a noise in this case. And the robot cannot map the blind spots as you can see while it is moving. The blind spots are the ones that are with uh, a little bit dark gray area. And these blind spots can be filled when the robot moves near the objects, just like the ones that you could see here, where the map is being updated as the robot moves through near the line. And now it looks as if the robot is lost in the line. So it's not uh, that it's lost, but the map created here is a three dimensional map and it's traveling behind the wall to uh, trying to map the whole environment. And uh, now I'm trying to, due to time restrictions, I'm trying to map one pole that you could see the center, uh, bottom center pole uh, to check the performance of the algorithm to see if it is um, really uh, good with respect to the cameras. And uh, as you can see, once it moves on the side, the, the, the boundaries are also getting filled slowly. This tells that uh, even though there is some blind, blind spots, the, uh, as soon as the camera goes near, it just gets updated. Another advantage of using such algorithm is, let's assume that one of the poles here is a temporary pole today. And tomorrow, if it changes, for instance, this map could correct itself. And this is how the algorithm itself is uh, working. And this is a main advantage of using such algorithm for creating map of the environment so that there is no need to replace or make changes in the future whenever the vehicle moves. And as you can see here on the center, the pole is uh, center bottom pole is mapped perfectly and there is a gap in the bit in between which is because the pole is rigid and uh, it's again a blind spot for the cameras of the vehicle and this is the 3d representation of the map that we created now so now we are to the last conclusion part of our presentation and the, the main there are different approaches of actually uh, solving the slam problems and this is one such approach which is more uh, flexible i would say because it, it allows you to use different sensors. In this case, I can use multiple cameras, for instance, depth cameras, or I can use stereo cameras with uh, depth cameras, or it could be a laser scanner, LiDAR, an IMU unit. All these data could be fused together and synchronized to create map of uh, such maps. And it also allows us to uh, compare the performance of different sensoric devices to know which one performs better with this algorithm. And another important or the key advantage is its ability to change or to correct the maps in the dynamic environment. As I told earlier, today I'm standing here and if there is a robot that is mapping now at the environment, it would consider me as an obstacle. But tomorrow I won't be here. So when the robot mo moves tomorrow in the same environment, it knows that this is a temporary obstacle and it deletes my space uh, from the map. This is the main advantage of using uh, such uh, this RTAP slums. 
and last but not but not least working of the robot is not fuzzy to understand unless we until uh, or we understand the logic behind it and it's pretty simple comparing to a human brain so thank you very much for your time and this is prince jabberson signing off if you have more questions feel free to write me an email or contact me on linkedin thank you